Listen in and join the fun. Learning as we go, new words and stories. Adventures begun. Let's open up the pages. Don't have far to look. It's all in a book. Rupees. Reading room. Rupees. Why, hello, little readers. Welcome to Ruthie's Reading Room. I'm Ruthie, and this is my buddy, Ja. He's my favorite stuffy, and he's going to join us for story time today. We're so happy you joined us as well, as we have a wonderful story to share with you. But before we get started, I'd like to invite you to run and get your stuffy or blankie and a reading buddy, and come on back. We'll be here waiting. <laughs> All right, I see my little readers are coming on back. Some of you have been sitting patiently waiting because you already had your stuffy ready. So great job. And let's ask the question, which book is coming off the shelf next? Let's see. All right, this book is called Taylor's Stem, Adventures Texas. Do any of you remember this series? Yes, this book is written by Dr. Mary Payton and illustrated by Jorge Mencila. So you might remember young Taylor here and we have the acronym. So that's when each one of the letters stands for a word. Do you want to work with me to remember what each letter stands for? Come on, we can do it. All right. So, Ja, you try too. Can you tell us what the S stands for? Good job, science. All right. Okay, Mary, go ahead. What does the T stand for? Technology. Awesome. And, oh, I see you, Uriah. What does the E stand for? Engineering. And that last one, the letter M. Oh, you really want to answer. I see you, Isabella. Okay, great. Math. Awesome, guys. High five. You remembered all the letters. Okay, but to find out about Adventures Texas, what do we have to do? Read the book. All right, let's get to it. Let's put Jaw in his reading spot. Let's put our listening ears on and put our hands in our lap. And let's check to make sure we're quiet. Okay, oh, I see much clearer now. And oh my goodness, that took no time at all. Look at you all sitting quietly. You must really want to hear about Adventures Texas. Awesome job, guys. Let's dive in. Howdy, my name is Taylor, and these are my STEM adventures. STEM stands for Let's make sure we got them all correct. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. High five, we got four out of four. My parents are both in the US Army working as STEM officers. My mom is a chemical officer and my dad is an engineer officer. Since science and engineering go hand in hand, my parents encourage and inspire me to grow my STEM talents. Because my parents are in the military, we have the chance to live and visit exciting places. Our new job is at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. Now, who was here last time we read one of Taylor's STEM adventures? Yep, a lot of you. Now, which state did we visit? Hawaii. That's right. Awesome job. I love when you guys remember what we've read before. Texas is the second largest state in the United States of America. The state is smaller than Alaska, but bigger than California. Texas is made up of seven regions. These regions include, get your pen and paper out. This is going to be a learning experience. South Texas Plains, Gulf Coast, Piney Woods, Hill Country, Big Bend Country, 
Panhandle, and Prairies Lakes. Did you catch all seven? Here they are again. Texas has been at the forefront of STEM for many years. It not only has many military bases, Texas also has many STEM things to do and interesting places to see. Can I tell you about some that I like? I'm gonna say yes, please, Taylor. First, San Antonio has great historical architecture throughout the city. Places I visited with mom and dad include the San Antonio Missions National Historical Park, the Alamo, and the Fort Sam Houston Quadrangle. These places were built over a hundred years ago with limestone from the area. Now, any of my local readers in Kingston? We know about limestone, don't we? Limestone is a type of sedimentary rock formed by the buildup of sediments during the rock cycle. This sediment comes from deposits of the remains of sea organisms, such as shellfish and corals. Why do you think many of the historic buildings in Texas are made of limestone? The reason limestone was used in many Texas buildings is because it was a material that was handy. It was probably all over the place, wasn't it? One day, my dad asked me, what does Disneyland and the San Antonio Riverwalk have in common? Dad explained that the original Riverwalk was engineered for flood control after the 1921 flood. It is a beautiful 15 mile long park with five miles of the river walk passing through downtown San Antonio. So I asked dad, what does the river walk have in common with Disneyland? He said it was the engineers. The engineering company that designed Disneyland suggested that the river walk reflect a Mexican colonial design. That is why it is so beautiful. Keep your pen and paper out. Take some notes. In school, our teacher told us about a number of caverns around Texas. According to him, Texas is a beautiful state above and below ground. It has more than 60 caverns and caves that have unique geological features and creatures. During dinner, I told mom and dad about the beautiful underground caverns near us. Mom asked if I knew how they were made and I said, yes, can I tell you? He's a smart cookie. She nodded, so I told her that the caverns were made by underground water moving through the limestone and flowing down from cracks in the surface. Are we writing? Am I, am I reading too fast? <laughs> what you can do is check in the description below and click the link. Purchase this book. There's so much great information. I explained that this flowing water created interesting formations called stalactites and stalagmites also that these formations look like icicles, stalactites growing down from the ceiling and stalagmites growing upward from the cavern floor. Stalactites and stalagmites, top, bottom. The creatures living in the caverns are cave beetles, spiders, ooh, I don't think I'll go in there, crickets, cascade salamanders, and bats. Ooh, probably good for a Halloween read, huh? <laughs> Some creatures never leave the caverns and have adaptations that help them to live in the dark. Because of the dark, many cave creatures do not have to camouflage themselves, so they have light coloring. One weekend, mom, dad, and I visited the Natural Bridge Caverns in San Antonio. We toured the underground caves to see the geological formations. Even though it was hot outside, it was cool and humid inside the cavern. The guide told us that the temperature was 70 degrees year round with 99% humidity. Because of the humidity, the stalactite and stalagmite formations were still growing. There were many rooms in the cavern. My favorite was the Hall Look. of the Mountain Kings. It was as big as a football field. That's huge. One week, my mom had to go to work in Austin, which is the capital of Texas. Austin is near San Antonio, so my Aunt Morgan and I went with her on the trip. As we got into Austin, I saw a huge pink building. I asked Mom, why is the building pink? She was not sure, so we called Dad to ask about the building. Dad told us that this was a Texas Capitol building. The Capitol was built with sunset red granite because there was a problem with the local limestone. 
The sunset red granite gave the building its pink color. Wow, these parents are full of info. I may have to cheat and use Google once in a while, but I'm learning. While mom worked, my aunt and I visited different places in Austin. Austin has a number of museums, parks, libraries, and more. Gotta stop at the library. One place that Aunt Morgan and I visited was Mount Bonnell, also called Covert Park. It is located beside the Lake Austin part of the Colorado River. We walked up the 102 steps to the top to see the river and the city of Austin. But we both had more fun at the Austin Nature and Science Center because we could touch everything. It was a great place and admission was free. Now that's the perfect price, isn't it? <laughs> In school, we learned that Austin had the largest number of Mexican free-tailed bats in any urban area. It's a lot of bats. <laughs> but Bracken Cave, 70 miles south of Austin, had the largest bat colony in the world. Chiropterologists are the scientists who study bats. Imagine, your whole study is on bats? <laughs> there must be a lot of these scientists working in Austin because the city has one and a half million bats living there. Oh. I'm going to stay clear of Austin. <laughs> Maybe I'll just pass through to see some of the other things Taylor is telling us about. On our last evening in Austin, we went to the Congress Avenue Bridge area to do some shopping. Mom had a big surprise for us while we were there. Just before sundown, we went to sit near the bridge with lots of other people. As the sun started to set, Hundreds and hundreds of bats began to fly out of the spaces under the bridge and headed eastward. It was amazing. Um, amazing is one word for it. <laughs> I told dad all about the trip when we returned home. He enjoyed our talk and agreed that we must visit Austin again. During our talk, dad asked me what I knew about dinosaurs. I told him that dinosaurs were huge and ate meat and plants and also were extinct. He answered, yes, they are. Next, Dad asked, were there dinosaurs in Texas? I had to think before I answered him. Then I said, yes, because on a school visit to the Witte Museum, we learned about fossils at the dinosaur gallery. Dad told me that around 110 million years ago, over 25 different dinosaurs and prehistoric animals lived in Texas. Many of them lived in areas between San Antonio and Fort Worth, as well as in the Big Bend National Park. According to Dad, the dinosaurs that eat meat are called carnivores, and those that eat plants are called herbivores. But he also said that there were omnivores. What's that? Hmm. Which are dinosaurs that eat both meat and plants? So we've got carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores. Keep on writing. Because Aunt Morgan lives in Fort Worth, I asked my parents if we could stop to see the dinosaurs when they took her home. They agreed and mom helped me choose places to visit on our trip. Our first stop was Waco, Texas to visit the Waco Mammoth National Monument. In 2015, the monument became part of the Texas National Park System through an executive order signed by President Barack Obama. The Waco Mammoth National Monument is the home of the Columbian Mammoth and other Ice Age animals. The Columbian Mammoth is not a dinosaur, but a prehistoric animal from the same family as the elephant. Yeah, check out the picture. It looks pretty similar, doesn't it? At the monument, we were able to tour the dig shelter to see fossils as they were found by paleontologists. Our next stop was Glen Rose, which was out of the way, so we stayed the night there. In Glen Rose, we visited the Dinosaur Valley State Park. There in the riverbed, we saw fossilized tracks from theropods and sauropods. The theropods were two-legged carnivores with sharp claws, and the sauropods were four-legged herbivores. A park ranger told us that the sauropods' footprints looked like big bear tracks, and their handprints were round like elephant tracks. It was a great trip! Again, let's connect this to another story we read. Does anyone remember another adventure book where there's time travel and we met some dinosaurs? Yeah, right here.
During the ride to Fort Worth, Aunt Morgan told me about the Papasaurus. The Papasaurus was a species of dinosaur found in Tarrant County, where she lives. The dinosaur skull was found in 1992 and looked like a big armadillo. You see, there's a lot of similarities between those prehistoric animals and dinosaurs and the ones we still see today. There's no relationship between the Papasaurus, a 15 foot long dinosaur and the armadillo, which is a mammal. The Papasaurus skull fossil is on display at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. I asked Aunt Morgan if we could go to the museum during our visit. She agreed that we should go. That's really great. Taylor's family, both his parents and his aunt, all seem willing to expose him to new experiences and he always seems willing to learn, which is awesome. Aunt Morgan is a math teacher and works in a university pre-engineering program. Because it was summer, I was staying with her for two weeks. I asked Aunt Morgan, can I go to work with you? Aunt Morgan said, yes, you'll go to work with me and I'm sure you'll have a great time. See what I mean? Look at all these smarties in the family. Going to work with Aunt Morgan, I was able to learn how to build bridges and robots. We also went to places like Lockheed Martin and the Texas Motor Speedway. But our visit to the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History was my favorite. I not only saw dinosaurs in the energy exhibits, but also visited the planetarium, which was just wonderful. Aunt Morgan told me that San Antonio was near Houston and that maybe my parents would take me to visit NASA sometime. Lucky for us, during a trip to the Gulf Coast, we met Mr. Hernan Contreras in Houston. Mr. Contreras is the uncle of one of mom's friend who is a retired NASA engineer. He is a Mexican-American mathematician who graduated from Texas and M University. Mr. Contreras took us to see the Saturn V rock at the NASA Johnson Space Center. He is getting a lot of cool experiences. Mr. Contreras also told us that the Saturn V rocket was used during the Apollo missions to take American astronauts to the moon. Because of the Saturn V rocket, the Apollo spacecraft and the lunar lander were able to make moon landings. Super cool. Over a Over. five year period, the rocket launched 27 astronauts into space with six moon landing missions. And if you want to go to the moon, were you guys with us for Teddy's terrific adventures, the space cadet? Yeah, that was fun. And this is a real thing. Mr. Contreras is also an amateur astronomer and a member of the Johnson Space Center Astronomical Society. That night, we stargazed using the Newtonian telescope that he himself built. Through the telescope, we could see stars and constellations close up. Wow, these guys have connections. <laughs> we had a great trip to the Texas Gulf Coast. I will tell you more about it later. Texas is such a big state and we will be here for a long time. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my adventures because I have more STEM adventures to share with you. Adios, until next time, y'all. The end. Awesome. Now, I'm sure if you're taking notes, your hand is probably sore, right? There is so much great information about Texas. Okay, so I enjoyed sharing this book with you. So just remember to check in the description below. You'll find a link to where you can purchase this book and add it to your home library. Maybe even suggest it for your school. Thank you for joining us in Ruthie's Reading Room. And remember, the best place to read is wherever you are with a book. And if you did enjoy reading with us, please remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Happy reading, little readers. Goodbye. Ruthie's Reddit.